So we have the motion of this object which is thrown through the air and it's modelled with this equation that's provided there. Okay? Now just quickly have a look at the equation. What kind of equation is it? It's in the family of quadratic functions. This is worth writing down by the way. So we've got x equals 20 t minus 5t squared. Now we mentioned before, I mentioned before, we were going to look at projectile motion later on. This is a projectile. It's been thrown upwards and it moves in the path, if you think about it over the course of time, it moves in a parabolic path up and down, but it's got that stationary point up at the top. We're going to prove that that is the case by the time we get to the, that, that um, part of the course, but for now we're just going to assume that it does that. Okay? So they provide you with this equation. They ask us to find a bunch of things as functions of time. So in part A, what are they asking for? Have a look. What's V? X dot. So this is X dot. This is the first derivative of displacement with respect to time. So I'm going to write V because they've asked me to write it down. And I'm going to say that is the derivative of displacement with respect to time. Okay, do you need to write that? No, you could go straight to differentiating if you wanted to, but I don't know about you, already in rates of change we've seen questions where it's like, I have five different derivatives flying around. I really like to describe really explicitly what derivative I'm actually working on. Okay, so Paul help me out, what's the derivative? 20 minus 10 t, thank you very much. Okay, there's my first derivative, there's velocity as a function of t, time. They also ask us for x double dot, x double dot, that is acceleration, which I get straight from this line, right? So can you tell me what the acceleration is? It's just, yeah, negative 10. 100% that 20 becomes irrelevant, and that's what we've got, okay? So I found velocity, I found acceleration. It says, show that the ball is always accelerating downwards. Accelerating downwards. How do I read that? Where do you get that from here? Yeah, it's the sign of this acceleration here, right? So I would say, since x double dot is always less than zero. It's negative 10 all the time, right? It is always accelerating downwards. And you can hear that um, language that I alluded to before. This is vector language because they say it's accelerating. Its velocity is changing, but then they also have to describe the direction in which it is changing. It is accelerating in that direction. Then sketch graphs of x, v, and x double dot against t. So when they say against t, they mean t is going to be your horizontal axis for the whole thing, and we're going to use the vertical axis to have, bless you, all three graphs of these at the same time. Can I give you a minute to draw up your axes? Think carefully about what kind of scale you're going to need to use so you can fit all three graphs, one, two, three, all in the same graph. I'll give you a second to put that together, and then we'll compare. Okay. How do your graphs look? Yeah? No? Yeah? Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Yeah, it's a... Thanur is giving me weird curly fingers. I don't know what that means. I'm, I'm trying to interpret you. <laughs> okay, so let's just have a quick look at this. I've got my, my x, which you told me before was a quadratic, so it's a parabola, right? I factorized it up here just to make it easier for me to work out what is going on. Um, that negative, which I chose to factorize out, I didn't have to factorize out, but it reminds me, oh yes, this thing is concave down. I've got the um, factorization was mainly so I could work out the uh, intercepts, the t intercepts, which you can see are 0 and 4 off of that factorization. 20 minus 10t, you can see that's where I get the uh, x intercept from. Got to be so careful with your x's and y's, right? And it's uh, going straight down because it's a straight line. And then you've got acceleration here, which is just a horizontal line, and it's always equal to negative 10. By the way, just because we've, we've gone past this question now, negative 10, always going down, what is this? What is this thing, this, uh, this force for the physics people, what is this force that is making the ball always being pulled down? This is gravity, right? Which um, you'll frequently see as negative 9.8, but negative 10 works nicer for numbers, and it's a close enough approximation in most cases that you'll see it quite frequently, okay? Right, so there are our graphs, and we're actually gonna to refer to this a fair bit as we answer the subsequent questions. Part B says, find the speed, note the wording of the, langu the language of the question, find the speed at which the ball was thrown, find when it returns to the ground, and show that its speed then is equal to its initial speed. Okay, so let's, let's process this, right? 
I want to work out the speed at which the ball was thrown and when it landed, right? So speed comes from velocity. I have a function for velocity. So I'm going to say the velocity at time zero, because don't forget, this is function notation, yeah? Because I have velocity written as a function of time. So when you write v zero, that means at time zero. Uh, here's my velocity function, right? So when I put in t as zero, what do you get left with? 20. Just 20. 20 take away zero, that's 20. And that's already positive, so I don't need to worry about that as a, um, I don't have to put absolute values or anything like that, it's already a positive value. I can just say that's speed. Uh, what units are those in, by the way? What units? 20 meters per second. Okay, so I should say that. That's the velocity. Now, in order to then work out the second half of this question, when does it actually hit the ground? Uh, my graph, I've already worked this out because I wanted to graph it with intercepts. So can you see when the ball hits the ground? Yeah, uh, it starts here and then it returns to the ground at time four. I've, I've stopped my parabola because I'm just assuming that um, this ball isn't going to burrow through the ground, so it stops at the ground at time 4. So therefore, I want velocity at 4. Okay. Now, I want to work out from this equation, I'm just going to substitute in just like I did before. This is a little less trivial, even though it's still pretty easy to work out. So your velocity is going to be, have a look. Minus yeah, negative 20. And therefore, from this, I can infer something about speed, right? I can say speed is just the absolute value of velocity, and the velocity at zero, its absolute value, also is its velocity at four when I take the absolute value, okay? So there's, um, that's the statement made, right? The velocity at initial, like, launch is the same as the velocity, sorry, the speed when you land, okay? Because I, I no longer care about direction, whether it's going up or down. Does that make sense?